Coming up to down the Leipzig Loco, we still find ourselves in a European qualifying spot off the back of the January transfer window. Hopefully we can stay there in two big Bundesliga games as we take on Schalke and Wolfsburg and also an update on how we finish the league phase of the Europa League. to episode 95 of the Leipzig Loco with Locomotive Leipzig here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up to date as I said to big Bundesliga games against teams who are in and around us on that table in the European Hunt. First up we take on Schalke currently in a Conference League qualifying spot and off the back of that we take on Wolfsburg just above us in a Champions League one. So if you're looking forward to that coming up in today's episode as well is a little bit of a transfer and Europa League update then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but off the back of yesterday's episode where we came back from the winter break and took on two pretty good teams in the Bundesliga again in Gladbach as well as Bayern Munich. If you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it in the top right corner also on that episode a little bit of some transfer news in that one as well but we have played three games off the back of that two of those were in the Europa League and one was in the Bundesliga first up it did look like a very winnable game as we did take on Quellebarg in that league phase of the Europa League and thankfully even with a pretty heavily rotated team for this game we did pick up a 5-0 win Cusetta he got a first half hat trick and then in the second half Danny Hummel came off the bench in place of Spalyag and got two late goals for that a very convincing display and that win was enough for us to secure our path through to the knockouts of the Europa League, albeit if results went our way on the final match day, we could have potentially snuck our way into the top eight. But unfortunately, the teams that were above us on that final match day in the Europa League picked up the results that they did need to stay in the top eight. So we are in the first knockout round of that competition. And anyway, we actually suffered a defeat to underbeat this one was pretty frustrating. We built into this game for outs. We weren't actually playing that well in the first half away from home, but unfortunately, that is when the goal did happen just before half time. A ball played into the mixture, and Oggard heads that one home into the top left corner. Very Amadori like. Unfortunately, he picked up an injury prior to this game. We'll tell you about that shortly. But as you can see, stats wise, a game that we probably should have got something from, but unfortunately, it is a defeat, but to be fair, as I said, of all the times to lose a game, that is probably when we want to sing, as winning it wouldn't have made a difference to where we would have finished up in terms of what round we would have entered into the knockouts. Here is the final Europa League table for this season. As you can see, we end up on 13 points, even a win over Underlecht on that final match day wouldn't have made any difference with Ghent also joint with Underlecht on 17 points. But there you can see Lons, Nottingham Forest, Fiorentina, Real Betis, Freiburg, Arsenal, Hoffenheim and Roma go straight through to the round of 16 while we could get drawn I believe against one of LASK, Lokomotiv, Plovdiv, RZ Sporting, Legia, Warsaw, Lech, Poznan, Luzern or Debrekny out of Hungary. Hopefully we don't get Luzern like we did in the Conference League last season having already played them in the league phase but really lots of teams there that we should be beating the only iffy team and amongst that bottom half does look like it might be sporting out of Portugal, but hopefully we might avoid them. The rest, I think we should be able to handle it in between those results. In the Europa League, we did pick up a win. In the Bundesliga, one all away from home against Hoffenheim. This was a game that we were well on top of yet again, but thankfully this time we were the team that scored the goal. Some nice short passing here just inside the box, and Amradori tucks that one away with a little bit of help from the inside of the goalkeeper's foot. They kind of nutmegged them. It found its way into that bottom right corner that was his last game before he picked up a training injury. A 1-0 win, albeit actually quite a good result considering we were down to 10 men for the last half hour or so in this game. Hitado, very bad tackle from behind just outside of the box, so it did mean we played the last 35 or so minutes of this game without a central attacking midfielder, but thankfully still found a way to hold on. It does mean Hitado will be missing from this first game of today's episode, where we do take on Schalke, but in terms of the Bundesliga, we are in a good position, joint on points with Club Bug, but we have a game in hand, and Schalke could go above us if they pick up a win here, but hopefully we can do the job at home. 
and then see if we can maybe close the gap on Wolfsburg in one of those Champions League qualifying places. So things going fairly well here at Lokomotiv Leipzig. As I said, even if we won that game against Underlecht, would have made our way into the round of 16 automatically. Anyway, unfortunately though, a couple of injuries going in to today's episode. Amadori, as I said, he'll be missing for the first game. He's out for one to two days with that twisted knee. But to be fair, that is actually our only one. We've had quite a few recently, but thankfully most players have recovered of late. In Manuel Alte and also Osvaldo has been under an injury cloud of late, thankfully. They are all available, but Leroy Sane still out for a little bit longer. He might not actually feature in the Europa League once we do make the knockouts because a new signing Spalyak doing a decent job in that competition, of course. We also have Danny Hermel, who does need to be registered for European competitions, but also off the back of that last episode, we did have January transfer deadline day, and we have got rid of one player and bought another in. It's a bit of a funny swap, but Carlos Pimenfell was a bit unhappy with his game time here at Lokomotiv Leipzig. With that in mind, we actually decided that we'd try and loan him out late in the transfer window, and in the end, we got rid of him to Bayer Leverkusen down in the two Bundesliga these days. Hopefully, he should get some game time there for a pretty big club down in that second division. He is there as an important player, has already played one game and did get an assist. So hopefully, that will help the Colombian international develop nicely and be ready to potentially make his way into a starting spot here next season, albeit Nicolo Amadori still well and truly the form man up front for us here at Lokomotiv Leipzig. But to make up for that loss, just felt like we potentially could still use an extra striker especially because late in the window we also got rid of some of our young prospects and Johan Sempik and also once I find it I believe we got rid of Tonda as well albeit that does not show up here but we got rid of a few of our young strikers so it did mean I still wanted a little bit of extra cover in that area so we got a deadline day loan of Alessandro Barrasso from Roma he is here as a fringe player so isn't too upset that he won't be featuring in the Europa League knockouts he looks like a decent option, actually star rating wise, a little bit better than what we had in Carlos Pimentel. So a little bit of a swap there going into the rest of the season in terms of our third choice striker. And obviously with Amadori being injured for this first game of today's episode, that could be of note. But hopefully we've got enough about us here to stay in a European qualifying spot and maybe perform a bit better in the knockouts of the Europa League than we did in the league phase. And as I said, coming up today, two big games. In the Bundesliga first up, hopefully we can put a bit of a gap on Schalke in that Conference League qualifying spot. Those guys currently down in seventh on the table, but come to this one off the back of some very good form since they have been back from the winter break. Four wins in four competitive games, including three in the Bundesliga. This one should be a very interesting match, albeit it is at home. So hopefully we can pick up a decent result against Stefan Baumgart in his cheese cutter. But... Let's get into this first game of today's episode. Obviously, that injury to Amadori, which we are dealing with. So it does mean that Cusita starts up front and also our new lonely striker makes his way onto the bench as well as that. Both our center backs are coming in for this game who are the rotation ones in Alte and Camillo because, of course, Hattado suspended and Osvaldo is still quite injury prone. And as well as that, we have got Baker in the DLP with Escobar also being injury prone at the moment. We'll just give our new striker a number. He can have number 40. We won't quite get rid of Carlos Pimentel's number just yet. Baker also comes in and captains the team as well, which is a little bit surprising. It must mean our vice captain is not playing this game. In fact, he isn't because that is Osvaldo. So it might be a little bit of an issue here. A bit of a lack of leadership, but hopefully we can still get over the line in this home game because Wolfsburg away could be a tricky one. But there's our lineup as we ran through before. A few changes in defense midfield and also up front. But there are Schalke. They are going with a narrow 4 3 3. But hopefully, at home, we can pick up a good result off the back of that loss against Underleck. The boys did get a bit of a rev up off the back of that because we did put out a few first teamers for that game. Considering that there was still a chance going to that match day that if things went our way, we could have snuck into the top eight. But as it worked out, that would not have been the case anyway. So it didn't hurt us too much. Early free kick there. And they do strike the post there through Zalazar. So an early chance there for Schalke. That does look a little bit dangerous. He might be quite decent from free kicks. And so far to be fair, Schalke have been on the front foot in this game. We now have a free kick around the 15 minute mark. Alte takes that and actually finds Pittman in some space down that left hand side. We'll just zoom out. So you can see the touchline's a bit better or the action once it gets closer to the touchline. Thankfully, Baker does recover there 
and we win the ball back, but Alte already has picked up a yellow card to be fair, is only recommended for 45 minutes coming back from his injury, so that might not be the worst thing that we take him off at halftime for Osvaldo, but obviously that might mean he needs to be rested at some stage, does our young Brazilian wonder kid, but we get the ball back here and try and do something down this left-hand side, Matthias Tal plays that one back to Pittman, orange ball today as we are playing in some slightly snowy conditions, now Alte up to Baker, tries to play that one over the top, looking for Mastiz, they should have dealt with that Schalke, but a mix-up between one of the defenders and the goalkeeper, and thankfully this time we make the most of that, that is a good lofted finish from Mikhail Mastiz, thought this ball from Baker wasn't the best one, had a bit too much on it, but it was a mix-up there between Cohn and the Schalke goalkeeper, and thankfully with no one in the net, he puts that one away, a little bit of an interesting reaction there from the goalkeeper, and despite the fact we've been on the back foot so far in this game, we do take a 1-0 lead, and hopefully we can hold on to that and pick up three points, which should keep us in a Europa League qualifying spot, as I said, if Schalke win this one, they will go above us on the Bundesliga table, to be fair, a draw from this game with the form they're in, wouldn't be too bad either, but 15 minutes left in the first half, we're starting to do a little bit more in this game, but Schalke still on the front foot with a slightly higher XG, but we are in front by one goal to nil. Now, a free kick here for Schalke, Blomaye has picked up a yellow card, we'll just try and go balanced and see if that stops this taking place, unfortunately, it's a little bit too late, and Zalazar will try and put that one top right corner, he had a warning shot earlier, that came off that post, this time it gets a little bit of help from the inside of it, unfortunately San Jose can't quite get there, and that's probably deserve a goal back there for Schalke to make this one all in terms of stats, they have been on the front foot so far in this game, a little bit frustrating how San Jose wasn't too well positioned for that, we continue to pick up the yellow cards too late in this first half, now Pittman picks one up, so it does mean we'll be making a few substitutions here at half time, but that was a pretty average first half. Thankfully, Mastis made the most of that error from the Schalke defence, but unfortunately, a couple of free kicks that we did give away, and we can see one late in that first half is going to the Sheds locked up at one, or we'll take off those players on yellow cards. So Osvaldo will come on for Alte, Ryan for Pittman, and also Manuel can come on for it. Justin Blomay will also make sure that Ryan will ease off tackles going into the second half, and I think we'll tell the guys that wasn't a good first half, because in terms of stats, we have been on the back foot in this game, and hopefully that gets a reaction as we get things back underway here, though, thankfully locked up at one all, because it could certainly be a bit worse based on those stats, but early stages, looks like we might be begging on the front foot a bit more off the back of those subs that we have made early thrown. Mastis will find Cosetta, rockets that one into the top right corner, and thankfully that halftime team talk might have given them the rocket that they need. He rockets that one, top right corner. Does our Croatian homegrown nation striker, of course, the man we signed from Everton at the start of the season in that transfer window. Good little bit of play there off the front. In fact, he puts that one in the bottom left corner. Thought that one actually went into the top right, but still, that's a very good bit of work there from a throw, and those can be very hit and miss, thankfully, that one worked out, and we are back in front, and to be fair, not too sure how, now coming up to the hour mark, just checking on player fitness, and Matthias Tell is down to a red heart, so Tunde Musa can come on for him, we'll just make sure that everyone stays fresh off the back of a few of these players, as I said, having taken part in that Anderlecht game, even though in the end, it wouldn't have actually mattered the result from that one, but as I said, for a minute there, a good result there, could get us into the top eight, down the other end, the decent chance for Ulrich, but thankfully, just puts that one line to Schalke, still offering quite a bit in this game, twice as many shots as us, but thankfully, very few on target, about to make our way to the last 20 minutes of this game, and quite a few players down to red hearts, so I think the safe option here, is to bring on Vochen in place of Sicker, and make sure that defence has some nice fresh bodies, albeit right off the back of that, there is a free kick here to Schalke, someone got their head on the end of it, I think it was Mata, but thankfully that is a easy save for San Jose, albeit this highlight is going to continue, easy option there for him, and Osvaldo unfortunately didn't quite look for him, but thankfully Spazajevic there will win that ball back for us, Mastis plays that one over the top this time, that finds its way to Ramirez and goal for Schalke, and maybe they'll get a chance to do something here, on the counter attack, they are definitely threatening to grab an equalizer in this game, it's been a bit of a helter skelter one, but we are up by two goals to one, and thankfully we do a good double team on that left hand side, to win the ball back, now Baker plays that one up to Cusetta, nice ball over the top there for Masties, can he square this for someone inside the box, Votgen 
Folks, this one far post for Tunde Musa, but unfortunately that one just goes wide and we are still only up by two goals to one, but still looking somewhat threatening. But it does feel like Schalke, with all those extra shots, might be the team who have a chance here to grab an equaliser, albeit with about 13 minutes left, there is a goal kick in our favour and Ryan starts to make his way down that left-hand side, plays one over the top here for Spasajevic, Musa inside him, good options for us here, Musa takes on the shot, Ramirez will make a save, but Cosetta, right place, right time, puts that one away now, going into the last couple of minutes of this game, we will be more disciplined, start to time waste and also distribute a bit more slower when we are playing out from the back because that is a big goal in a game where we have really been on the back foot for most of it but thankfully we've been a bit more efficient with our chances in this one that time Musa with a shot from a tight angle off the back with a nice bit of play from Ryan to send Spasajevic through and in the end Cosetta right place right time to grab a double and hopefully we can hold on here now and pick up all three points. As I said, it actually felt like Schalke would be more likely there to grab an equaliser, but thankfully that was not the case. Now they're down to 10 men here as Ulrich is off the pitch. Roman Chuck, though, gets his head on the end of that free kick, but thankfully just goes over the bar while we're here. We'll make sure that Votchin is going to ease off tackles. Now as a highlight here, just making our way into four minutes of added time. Now Ryan, lots of space there down that left-hand side, but unfortunately Roman Chuck again gets his head on the end of that one now, Zalazar, and it might be a chance here for Schalke to do something on the counter attack. We nearly win that ball back, but Murder gets it back a few times there now. Osvaldo heads that one away, but Murder gets it back. It's a bit helter skelter there on that left hand side, but now Klus tries to play one for Bankley. Ryan deals with that danger, albeit we're just trying to hoof this one deep, but unfortunately can't quite link up on the halfway line. And it is Carloni plays one over the top there nicely. Or murder, big chance, but thankfully he was offside. And also San Jose, he comes up with a save. But hopefully that will be all she wrote in that one. Indeed, that was the case. Definitely not our best performance, even though we actually ended up with a higher XG, largely because we actually ended up with the same amount of shots on target. But Schalke were quite threatening in that game. In the end, they only scored from a free kick just before halftime. But thankfully before then, Mastis makes the most of a defensive error, and in the second half, Cosetta makes a good impact with two goals, especially that one from that throne that was quite nicely worked, and we pick up an important 3-1 win because that keeps us in a Europa League qualifying spot and also closes the gap on Wolfsburg going into that second game of today's episode, albeit they do have a game in hand. Also worth noting, the race for the title, very, very tight. RB Leipzig probably in pole position with a couple of games in hand by in third and have played a few more games than those teams above them so Dortmund RB Leipzig and Bayern in a good title fight this season but we are still in one for Champions League qualification off the back of a good 3-1 win they're a little bit scratchy but we pick up a win over Schalke at home So a good result from that first game of today's episode and coming up into the second one where we do take on Wolfsburg thankfully we have Nicolo Amadori back available for this one and Felio Alte is still available as well albeit only for 45 minutes, but something to update you guys on before we get stuck in to this fourth versus fifth clash because we have had the draw for our first knockout round of the Europa League. I said earlier we should be able to handle most teams in that competition except for potentially one, and guess what? That is who we got of all the teams down that left hand side. We get what I would say is the most difficult considering we bet RZ on our way to win the Conference League last season. We are taking on Sporting of Portugal, so that will be a very interesting tie coming up. And to be fair, we might come back for that one come the start of next week, albeit they currently don't have a manager, maybe that's a league I did not load up for the safe, so that could be quite useful potentially. Might make things a bit easier than otherwise it would have been. And also, they're all the way down in eighth on the Portuguese league table, so maybe they're actually not as good as I thought they might be, but still, that did look like the biggest name of those ones that we could get drawn against in that first knockout round of the Europa League, but hopefully we can still find a way to get past them, but as I said, I think that's what we're going to come back for come the start of next week, seeing as that is actually a potentially difficult tie in that knockout playoff round, but before then we do have to try and get past Wolfsburg, but with that in mind being quite a tough draw, we are going to rotate our team a little bit going into this game, but Wolfsburg just above us on the Bundesliga table, albeit they do have a game in hand, but recent form is pretty decent. They've come into this one off the back of a win over Fortuna Dusseldorf and also some decent performances in the league phase of the Champions League, around about where they're expected to be inside that top four 
in the Bundesliga this season, albeit slightly below those teams in that title fight in Leipzig, Dortmund, and Bayern Munich. But hopefully, even though this one is away from home, our record against these guys isn't too bad. Hopefully, we can find a way to grab something from this game, even though with that sporting game in mind now, only a few days off the bag of this one, we do have quite a few tired players, so we are rotating a little bit more than I would ideally be doing with that tough little draw that we have got for the Europa League. And that means that we have made changes to quite a few of our areas off the back of that previous game. Horvath, Hurtado coming at the back as well as Ryan. Also in terms of the midfield, we have still got Baker in there, but Manuel as well, because Blomier, he is suspended for this one. He's a player actually could have started, but unfortunately that suspension stuffs things up there. Also Spaliak outright, and we've got Musa out left, and of course Amadori makes his way back into the team, as well as that Zerxi has picked up a little niggle going into this one as well, so he is unavailable, so ideally we would have given Zoran a rest here. That is not an option. It does mean that Cosetta as well, as our new lonely striker, our options off the bench in this one. So as I said, it's quite a bit of rotation going to this game. Not ideal, but I feel like this is a game which could have been tricky anyway. And if we can get the job done in that first league over Sporting, that might mean we can focus on a more winnable game in the Bundesliga off the back of that. When we do take on Cologne, will be at first highlight here. We are away from home in the grey. We get a chance to do something here on the counter-attack. Tunde Musa. Almost through one-on-one -on -one there, but unfortunately a little bit too slow. Takes a shot from outside the box and it doesn't really freshen. But an encouraging start, even though we have rotated quite heavily for this game with that Europa League first knockout round in mind. And coming up to the 15-minute mark, still slightly on the front foot. But now Wolfsburg starting to make their way into this game a little bit more. And as I say that, they now have a front inside of the final third. Ben Doak puts that one into the mixer and Samiento gets his head on the end of that one. Fort San Jose should have dealt with that danger but unfortunately gets a touch on it. It only helps it on its way into the back of the net and we go 1-0 down with really the first Wolfsburg attack that we do see. Camillo there gets out jumped by that attacker and we go 1-0 down. Two Wolfsburg away from home in this could be a tricky day at the office considering the players that we do have on the field with that Europa League tie in mind as I said earlier. Hopefully though we can find a way to try and get something out of this game now coming up to the half hour mark yet again. Wolfsburg are on the attack. This could end up being a little bit of a long day at the office for us and Samiento gets in behind yet again this time. Takes on the shot. Thankfully though that ended up being from a tight angle and also one of our defenders I think that time would have been Hitado. Gets a little bit of interference on that so the shot is a little bit more difficult thankfully though doesn't find its way into the back of the net but Wolfsburg now are certainly getting on the front foot a few minutes shy of half time and we are still 1-0 behind albeit that's not too bad kind of similar actually to that first game in today's episode against Schalke but this time we have done very little in terms of attacking Wolfsburg getting a few more shots on target including that one to Sarmiento now, with that scoreline in mind and also that Europa League situation, we might take off Hitado for our taste that recommended, as you saw earlier, for 45 minutes. And him being on a 6.3, that might not be the worst idea. Give them a rest while we can, but we'll tell the guys we need to be a lot better in terms of holding the ball and getting a few more attacking chances in the second half. And hopefully that gets some sort of response as we get the second half underway. 1-0 behind, it looks like. It's got something going because we have an early corner here looking for Amadori at the far post. It does ripple the net, but unfortunately on the wrong side of it. And we are still down by one goal. No one's shortly off the back of that. It is a free kick here to Wolfsburg. Yet again, they look for Sarmiento at that far post in the air. Thankfully that time, though, we deal with the danger. Now, Tunde Musa felt like there he could have tried to find Spaliak sooner. And maybe he should have because, unfortunately, a defender gets back there and gets the ball for them. Now, Musa, though, with a good interception, but yet again, takes a shot from probably a little bit too far out. So we are still threatening in the second half, which is encouraging, but down by one goal to Northern coming up to the hour mark. Now, Manuel picks up a yellow card. We did start Horvath in this game, so it does mean that Sick is on the bench as well as Votchin, and he can cover the midfield so he can come on for Manuel for the last half hour of this game. Also, we'll take off Zoran and we'll bring Cassidy on to play as a shadow striker. He's struggling in this one as well as that. We will chuck Bolasso up front in place of Amadori. Also, not going too great. So hopefully, that might get something out of us. Give some of those players who we will need for the first league of that Europa League tie against Sporting a bit of a rest. But now Wolfsburg here do get a chance to play out from the back to be fair. 
they're probably looking at us now and thinking this is a game that we can kick on and win by a couple of goals. And Bucker does some quite good work there and makes his way towards the byline, plays that one back. Although Cusetta, with some really good work, good impact already coming off of the bench, he's actually been in some decent touch since Amadori did pick up that injury, plays that one back to Hall after the young right back, and he plays that one in to Baker, albeit a bit slow on the ball. And it was Wolfsburg there with a decent chance, albeit Spalyak. Does well to win that ball back for us and plays that one back. Now loop ball over the top there looking for Cusetta. Good chance there on the volley, but unfortunately he puts that one wide. That is a good chance there for the man who is now playing as a shadow striker. So we are creating chances and starting to even up the stats, but unfortunately still down by one goal nil and coming into the last 20 minutes. It is a throw in here and Emerson Royale tries to pick out a teammate, gets that one back and plays it back to a good young promising centre back here in Zabane. Now Almeida plays that one up to Hermals, a poor pass though looking for Veron, and we might get a chance here on the counter, but unfortunately put a bit too much on that one. Wolfsburg at the moment looks like they are dominating the ball, but thankfully yet again do some good work there down that far side to win it back. Now Cusetta, nice ball over the top, and Spalyak is somewhat in behind tight angle, but will beat the goalkeeper and Mr. And Spalyak at a big time as well, picked up his first goal for the club and hopefully now we can grab something from this game. We definitely were second best for most of that first half of showing a bit of life in the second despite the fact we're giving some of our first team players a rest for that Europa League tie and Spalyak Cassetta's actually doing a really good job there in that shadow striker role and plays him in good finish there beating the goalkeeper and it was a free kick there for Wolfsburg shortly off the back of that and we do deal with the danger and it's actually a really good chance for us here to do something yet again on the counter attack Spalyak right on the edge of the box, plays that one back to Votgen, he goes down, but unfortunately not a penalty, and it will mean Wolfsburg now have some numbers on attack on us, Dutro on the ball down this left hand side, looks like he's got a bit too much pace there, or who that is trying to mark him, we get a block in there through our tape, but unfortunately Wolfsburg is still looking quite threatening, they put a ball there into the mixer, and thankfully someone gets a block on that, it goes over the post, also interesting to see, it's behind my head, but her for Berlin in the relegation zone, are uh, beating RB Leipzig, unfortunately off the back of that corner, Baker gives away a free kick right on the edge of the box, just saying, if there's something that we can do here to try and stop this from taking place, I don't think there is, even though we actually still have one substitution that we can make, but it's a free kick here, if Ben, ben Doak puts that one towards the edge of the box, goes back to Veron, but thankfully his shot is blocked, it goes all the way to the centre backs on the halfway line, and we do deal with that danger now making our way towards the last 10 minutes, and I think it is time for us, to make our last sub in this game. Now we can bring on quite a big player in this situation and Tunde Musa of those players on a red heart is on the lowest rating so Matthias Tell can come on for him. If we can pick up another win from this game even though we have been second best that would be quite good for the last little bit of this game. We will just go a bit wider in terms of our attack as well and see if that will help but it's a free kick here for Wolfsburg, thankfully, from a tight angle far post this time, they put it wide. They are looking quite threatening in the air today. Certainly still on the front foot, but thankfully, that second half goal through Spalyak does look like it might mean we get a point from this game. Interesting to also see they might have been down for 10 men the last 10 or so minutes of that one with an injury. But that, considering the team that we put out for that game, is not a bad result at all. One point away at Wolfsburg. Not too bad. It does mean we should keep pace with them a little bit for that last Champions League qualifying spot. You imagine RB Leipzig, Bayern and Dortmund being in a title race. We'll be featuring the Champions League next season, but hopefully that is something that we can also do. That's not a bad result there. One all the way at Wolfsburg, especially as I said, with the team that we did end up putting out. Thankfully, we bounced back from a pretty average first half with that goal to Spalyak in the second and pick up a one all draw. Not a bad episode against two teams in and around us on the table, four points from those two games. So I think we'll actually take that from today's episode, two quite tricky games against teams in and around us on the Bundesliga table, three points at home with that 3-1 win over Schalke, and then a one all draw away against Wolfsburg, not too bad at all considering we put out a lot of rotation players with that tie against Sporting in the Europa League, and one, there's what the table does look like off the back of that match day, Schalke picked up a comprehensive win over Eintracht Frankfurt the next day, also worth noting, Dortmund now go top of the league. That is off the back of Hertha Berlin holding on to beat RB Leipzig. So that is a very interesting Bundesliga title race, albeit now it is RB Leipzig who do have the game in hand. And I imagine that is one against Wolfsburg. So kind of torn as to who I want to win that game. If RB Leipzig win it, 
they go top of the table, but we can potentially have more chance of catching up to Wolfsburg in that Champions League qualifying spot. But then, do we want RB Leipzig to win the Bundesliga before we do? Probably not considering they're our rivals in the save, but decent results from today's episode. Hopefully, we can push on around the time that we start to focus on the knockouts of the Europa League, especially with most of our players who are registered for that competition now being back from injury and about ready to get stuck in to a full 90 minutes. But if you enjoyed today's episode with those two games as well as a bit of a transfer and Europa League update, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and have been enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. We'll come back at the start of next week. As I said, with that tie that we did get in that knockout playoff round, I think we might actually come back and take on Sporting in the first episode at the start of next week. We can continue through the Europa League as long as we stay in it, but that could be a bit tricky even though they are struggling in the domestic league. So we're going to come back at the start of next week and get stuck into our very next game, Sporting away from home, and we'll see how that one goes over the two ties, hopefully at least we can make our way into that round of 16, and then we'll take on some teams who will definitely be quite challenging for us based on their performance in the league phase of that competition, but we'll come back for that next week and hopefully can progress a little bit in that competition before we start to focus a bit more on the end of the Bundesliga season and hopefully secure some European football through that this time. But until the start of next week, we're going to take on Sporting in the knockout playoff round of the Europa League. Thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers. Don't know how I ended up, I ended up to love